Hello everyone! My name is Blakely Bristol and unfortunately I'm not tech savvy enough to um, figure out how to record it straight from my computer so we are going to have to make this work. So I'm sorry for the quality and if you can't see the videos very well, but we're going to make this work. So my teaching strategy is all about hand washing and germs. Um, that falls under the personal and consumer health. My grade levels are, it could fit kindergarten and first, but the one I specifically chose was for kindergarten. You could integrate some science and math. That's kind of what I used for this topic. Um, so, we are going to get started. So, for the first part of this lesson, I would, you know, probably go ahead and ask some kids what they knew about germs or how often they got sick. And then next, I would like to play this video from Sid the Science Kid. Everyone loves Sid the Science Kid. So, here we go. Then, I shall be in charge of all the ice cubes in the world, because I am Dr. Meek, ha ha! Hi, I'm Sid. Welcome to my room. Hey, Sid. Breakfast oh. is almost... Uh, 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 ready. Uh. Bless you, Dad. Thanks, Sid. <laughs> Dad's got a cold. <laughs> Mom and Dad keep telling me if I don't want to catch Dad's cold, I gotta wash my hands. Mm. Wash your hands before you eat. Wash your hands before you sleep. Wash your hands after you go to the bathroom. Uh, boy, pretty soon I'm gonna have to wash my hands before I wash my hands. <laughs> well, what I want to know is, why? Why do I gotta keep washing my hands? Sid, breakfast time! Cool, I'm really hungry. <laughs> So at this point, I might just kind of pause the video and ask the class around me, what do you think Sid is going to do first before he eats breakfast? Hopefully getting the answer, oh, he's going to wash his hands because everyone else around him is sick. And then we'll resume the video. I might also stop and pause the video for a minute after he sneezes and ask everyone what they think is wrong with the way he sneezed. Hopefully getting the answer that he sneezed straight into his hands. Um, it is good that he washed his hands after he sneezed, but it's still not super great that he sneezed straight into his hand. So there's germs all over my hands. Yeah. Ugh. So, um, germs are the things that make you get a cold? Yep, that's right. Hmm. Well, I don't see any germs on your hands. Well, you're right, Sid. So here, let me tell you something. You know, we can't see germs with just our eyes. You can't even see them with a magnifying glass. What? Well, here, take a look. Germs are so small that you need one of these to see them. It's an electron microscope. Cool. Looks like a giant robot or something. <laughs> it kind of does, doesn't it? Hmm. So is it like a super duper 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 magnifying glass that makes little things look much, much bigger? <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty good way to describe it. Hmm. Oh, I hope I'm not getting your dad's cold. Ooh, I hope so, too. <laughs> well, I don't want to catch a cold either. So, after breakfast, I better investigate this more at school. Ah, now that sounds like a great... Uh-oh. Uh -oh. A false alarm. <laughs> Bless you! Thanks, guys. 
Okay, so now that that is over, I think it's really good to, you know, just kind of go back and ask them some questions about the video, like, what is a germ? How do they get on your hands and how do you get them off? Why do you need to wash your hands? And ask them this question to maybe get their brains going a little bit. Are all germs bad? And you're probably going to get some pretty simple answers um, from your little kindergartners at that point. But after this point, we are going to do a little science experiment. Because we just watched Sid the Science Kid, so why not do a little experiment? Okay, so for this experiment, over here I've got a bowl and a glass of water, some dish soap, and normally I would use just regular craft glitter, but unfortunately I couldn't find any, so I have this makeup glitter, and we are going to hope that it works just as well. So... First, we're gonna start off and we're just gonna pour some water into our bowl. Okie dokie. And then we need to put in some glitter. Okay. So again, I've used the, I've done this experiment before with some kids that I have watched and we did it with normal glitter and it worked really well, but I'm not so sure how it's going to work with this makeup glitter, but hey, we'll try our own little science experiment right here. So after that, I'm just going to open up some dish soap and if you watch the glitter, I'm really hoping that this works. You are going to just put a little bit right in the middle. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. That actually worked really well. So you see how the glitter um, just kind of separated and moved away from the soap. So uh, you definitely need to explain to your kids that the glitter is supposed to represent the germs. The water is obviously water and the soap is as if you were washing your hands. So it's kind of like a little experiment to show them that whenever you wash your hands with soap and water, the germs are going to go away. The germs are going to move because they don't like the soap, and that's how you get cleaner hands. So now that that experiment is done, and you can always do multiple experiments, you can maybe separate your kids and have them do it on their own. Um, different types of glitter is always fun, different colors of glitter is super fun. Maybe you do it multiple times. Maybe you try testing how much soap you need. Um, so yeah, that would be super fun for them. So now that the science experiment is over and we've talked about how important it is to wash our hands, I've also found a little video on how to wash your hands. It's a five minute video, which I think is probably just a little bit too long. Um, but I did go ahead and fast forward to 2 minutes and 40 seconds. You might even be able to do a little bit more than that. And you could even stop it a little bit earlier. So we are just going to go ahead and watch a little bit of it. Play the germs, because they like to hide. I'm liking these hands. You're right, buddy. There's lots of great places to hide. You hide under the nails. I'll hide between the fingers. <laughs> First, turn on the tap and wet your hands. Warm water works best. Use plain liquid soap. Scrub your palms together. Then the backs of your hands. Your thumbs, most people forget to wash them, you know. Between your fingers. Then scrub your knuckles to clean your cuticles. That's the part of your skin that's closest to your fingernail. And your fingertips to clean under your nails. You should scrub for at least 15 seconds before rinsing off the soap. Then dry your hands well with a paper towel. Don't forget to use a paper towel to turn off the taps and open the door. Otherwise, you'll just get germs from the handles on your hands again. I can't see. I can't see. I guess washing your hands properly is... 
So that actually wasn't too long for them to just kind of see the steps in action. Um, this video, I have watched the full thing. It does go back, and if you watch it from the beginning, it just kind of describes a lot of what Sid the Science Kid talked about. But um, So if they wanted to watch it, they could, but I don't necessarily find it super necessary other than that one part. So after this, I think that the best thing to do with the little kindergartners is physically have them do it themselves. You could easily make a poster board. You could even make a song out of the steps. And if you're all sitting together, you could definitely just kind of go through all of the steps of washing your hands. Uh, if you have time, if you have a personal sink in your classroom, it would be great to physically get up and have everyone kind of wash their hands. But unfortunately, most classrooms aren't going to have that or have the time for that. So you might just have to kind of wing it and um, just kind of pretend to wash your hands. So they can pretend that they have water on their hands and some soap. Um, find some fun hand motions for that for them to kind of make it just fun and entertaining. Get them moving a little bit. And so after that, I put on my lesson plan that I would have my students go back to their seats. And I actually found some, this is kind of part of the math part I talked about. So there are these great worksheets. You can get them for free. And there's a couple of them on here. The one I specifically chose was the complete the pattern. Let me get a little bit closer so you can see that. And it just has all the little patterns right here. And if you scroll down, there's the little germs, super cute. I have that they should cut out all of the germs first down here. And then after they've done that, they need to go ahead and decide where they're going to go. And then after that, they can take a glue stick and glue them on a little bit. There are also, this is just the one I specifically chose, but if you keep scrolling down there some more, cut or trace the lines and a germ matching game that you can actually laminate and keep for your classroom. This is a really great resource. I've gotten a couple things from it and all of it's free, super cool, run by um, a mother. So after this, this will probably take them a little bit. You might need to just walk around and check on them and make sure they're getting the patterns correct. Again, super good for math, tying it in with math. We've done the little science with the science experiment. So definitely tying in some math would be great for them. After this, I found a super cool, I actually forgot to pull it up on my laptop, um, but I think you could have everyone come back together on maybe the carpet or if you just want them to sit in their seats and definitely go back and just kind of review the questions you asked in the beginning about um, what is a germ, how do they get on your hands, how do you get them off, why do you need to wash your hands, what do germs look like, and then again going back and asking that same question about are all germs bad because a lot of kids understand that there are good germs that sometimes you need germs. So maybe just kind of seeing where they're at, what level they're at with that. But definitely for this portion, you should expect some more clear answers, maybe some more detail, probably them pulling a little bit of evidence from the videos. And that would be great. My last part that I forgot to pull up on my laptop, but it is, let's just see if we can pull it up really quickly. It's the DAP coughing from Pinterest. So, a huge, and I don't see it just pulling it up. So, a huge part, not a huge part, but a lot of the kids love this new dabbing trend, the dance. And there's actually a little picture somewhere on Pinterest about DAB, but it stands for Defend Against Germs, which is super cute. 
and it's interesting because the dab dance move kind of looks like you're coughing into your arm so it's kind of a reminder to just cough sneeze into your elbow um to kind of defend against some of those germs you don't want to be like sid's um dad where he was coughing straight into his hands or sneezing into his hands and just kind of teaching that going over it with them and then that can just be a simple little thing in your classroom. If you see someone sneezing or coughing just out in the open, maybe just kind of rem reminding them, hey, do you remember um, how to dab? And then they'll, they'll definitely remember they love doing that little dance move. So it's definitely something to help remind them and kind of hold them accountable. Um, I think this is a super great lesson that ties in a lot for your little kindergartners. Um, it just lets them visually see the germs and have it explained and then, um, you know, physically getting to do the science experiment and, you know, washing their hands and then getting to work with those patterns. That's going to be a huge thing for your kindergartners, the patterns and all of those other um, activities are great too. So yeah, I hope you have enjoyed this lesson. I appreciate you for watching and thank you.